Welcome back to Candy's Classic Game Shrine, everyone. Today we're going to talk about the Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy is often referred to as a failed console, and no matter how much I love this system, I can't deny the fact that it was a failed console. Even though it was a failed console, the Virtual Boy had a lot of fun games to offer that were never ported to any other system out there in existence. So, what are you going to do to enjoy these games? Well, you have options. You can invest in a VR headset and play them through an emulator in 3D, which is probably one of the best ways if you don't want to buy a Virtual Boy. The other ways would be to emulate them without the 3D, which is possible. I do this to capture footage for my reviews, um, but it can be tricky with certain games. Uh, your other option is what I'm going to propose in this video, and that would be to play games that offer nearly identical or very similar gaming experience to the 22 official games for the Virtual Boy. I spent a few months playing various different games on various different consoles, and with the help of a couple other people, I was able to amass this list, and let's dive in! If you're looking for an experience like 3D Tetris outside of the Virtual Boy, look no further than Blockout. This game can be found on various systems like the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, PC, and the Atari Lynx. They're pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to 3D Tetris, except you get to play these in color. Playing it in color makes it much easier to play since you can actually differentiate between different blocks and different layers better than you can in red and black. As we go through this list, you'll notice there are quite a few Virtual Boy-like games on the Atari Lynx. This game's gonna be no different. If you're looking to experience a futuristic action sports game like Space Squash on the Virtual Boy, but only have an Atari Lynx, you can play Robo Squash for a spiritual port of the game. Much of the game's mechanics are shared with the Virtual Boy's Space Squash. Hands down, one of the best games for the Virtual Boy is Virtual Boy Wario Land. It's truly criminal that this game was never released outside of the Virtual Boy because of how enjoyable it is and how easy it is to play without 3D. Despite this being one of the games you can safely emulate and enjoy, you can find similar experiences through other Wario Land entries on the Game Boy. I personally find it more similar to the first game than the one titled as Wario Land 2, but Wario Land 2 came out closer to the time that Virtual Boy Wario Land did, and it's still quite enjoyable. Innsmouth no Yukata is one of the Virtual Boy games that was never replicated in any other game in its entirety. The closest you're going to get are Doom clones, but even then you never get the branching paths, different endings, or the puzzle element that you got in the game. Of the games that I've played, I found the closest experience to Innsmouth to be Alien v Predator on the Atari Lynx or Jaguar. It offers a similar atmosphere of the alien-like monsters hunting you in a maze-like level, while you have to manage your resources carefully. More Lovecraft-inspired horror games need to exist. Mario Clash is another game that greatly benefits from having the capability of 3D. If you want a crazy challenge, you can emulate this game with no 3D, and try to adapt to having to throw shells into the foreground and background, and trust me, it's not as fun as it sounds. I've played over 99 levels of it this way, and you're going to want to scream at the end of it. If you want a fun way to experience this game, the original Mario Brothers for the NES or Arcade is pretty much the same game, and you get to play it with two players. Mario's Tennis was the first tennis game featuring our favorite Italian plumber and his friends. Sure, he made cameos on the NES tennis games, but not like he does in his debut on the Virtual Boy. His experience wouldn't be able to be had again until the Nintendo 64's Mario Tennis came out. This game doesn't give you an over-the-shoulder view like the Virtual Boy, but the experience is very similar and offers new features and even more characters. On the other hand, this is a game you can safely emulate for the Virtual Boy if you really want to play it. Panic Bomber for the Virtual Boy is one of the few games that kind of escaped being abandoned on the Virtual Boy. This game came to a bunch of consoles such as the PC Engine, FM Towns, NEC PC 9821, the Neo Geo MVS, Super Famicom, PSP, and others. The Virtual Boy game differs from these ports because it has different enemies 
and a storyline that differs from the rest. The gameplay is pretty much identical to the ports, however. The ability to see the game in color and on the other consoles makes it significantly easier to play, though. Red Alarm is a wireframe combat flying game for the Virtual Boy. This one is difficult to emulate without 3D, as it can be pretty disorienting without the depth of the 3D. If you're looking for a similar game, I would recommend Star Fox on the SNES. The version on the N64 is far too polished to compare to Red Alarm, whereas the rudimentary polygons and gameplay in the SNES version are closer to Red Alarm on the Virtual Boy. This one is easy to cover. Have you ever played Space Invaders or a Space Invader clone on literally any console, including your phone? If you answered yes to that question, then you've basically played Space Invaders on the Virtual Boy. Despite the huge price tag that goes with the Virtual Boy copy of the game, there is very little that separates it from any other version in the Space Invaders franchise. V Tetris for the Virtual Boy is a pretty standard Tetris game with a few different game modes that don't really differ much from the traditional Tetris. There is a mode in V Tetris where the bottom of the field scrolls to the side, however I do believe that can be found in later Tetris games. If you enjoy Tetris on a particular platform, I would just suggest you stick with it because it's pretty much the same game with very few additions to the gameplay. However, if you really do want to try this version of Tetris, it's one you can emulate and have fun with. So Vertical Force is a game you can play through emulation, but it can be a bit tricky due to the depth needed to detect certain obstacles and enemies. With that said, it isn't nearly as tricky as Mario Clash would be to play through emulation, so if you want, go for it and see how it goes. If you want to have a similar experience to Vertical Force, you can get your fix by playing a game like Xevious or Gun Knack or 1942 for the NES. They all offer a similar top-down vertical space shooter, similar to what Vertical Force would offer. Sadly, you won't get an awesome soundtrack that Vertical Force has, but at least you'll still have fun. The infamous Virtual Lab is an expensive, rare, and truth be told, pretty awful game. It is a game that could easily have existed on other platforms, but luckily for everyone, it decided to call the Virtual Boy home. It's a game that can easily be emulated because it really lacks anything that takes advantage of the hardware and is very basic for a puzzle game. There aren't many puzzle games like it out there, and that might be for good reason. If you want to play something kind of close to that game, but on a different platform, I would guess you might want to try Pipe Dream for the NES. It has a similar concept where you need to connect different pipes or tubes to create a closed circuit, if you will. Just a heads up before you play Pipe Dream, it does lack the boob jiggle physics that Virtual Lab has. When it comes to golf games, there isn't much to really be said about them. Most are digital versions of the actual sport with very little personality. Sadly, Golf for the Virtual Boy is the same story. Because it's basically just another golf game, you could just emulate it, or you could just play any golf game from the era and pretty much experience the same thing. If you don't want to emulate this for the Virtual Boy, a similar enough game would be Pebble Beach Golf Links for the Genesis slash Mega Drive, or even the SNES. It offers a very similar setup to golf on the Virtual Boy. Tell Roboxer is another game that's hard to experience outside of the Virtual Boy. This is a first-person boxing game and was one of the only titles to capture a virtual feel on the Virtual Boy. Because of that, the best way to play this game is on actual hardware. You can play it through emulation with some adjusting for the lack of 3D. A game that would be somewhat comparable would be the arcade version of Punch-Out. Having little Mac and wireframe would be the closest you would get to this style until modern VR games popped up. Galactic Pinball is a pretty fun game on the Virtual Boy that allows you to play on a few different space-themed tables. This game is loosely Metroid-inspired, so I find it very fitting that a comparable game to Galactic Pinball would be Metroid Prime Pinball on the Nintendo DS. Galactic Pinball can be emulated and played with no trouble, but for a slightly more modern and fun way to enjoy a Metroid-type pinball game, Metroid Prime Pinball for the Nintendo DS would be a good choice, in my opinion. Virtual League Baseball is a pretty standard baseball game as far as baseball games go. 
It does rely on the depth of the 3D in order to make your bat swings more accurate, so emulating this one is kind of rough. Playing this one on real hardware is rough, so honestly I wouldn't even recommend that. It's the worst game on the Virtual Boy in my opinion. If you want a baseball game that plays similarly but infinitely better, Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run for the SNES would be my choice. It's much more playable and appealing to the eye than Virtual League Baseball. SD Gundam Dimensions War is a tactical RPG game based on the Gundam franchise. These games feature chibi versions of the mech suits making strategical moves and battling it out to save the universe. This game features very little 3D, and you can play this through emulation. If you do want to play this through emulation, I would recommend the English patch of the game unless you're able to read in Japanese. If you don't feel like going through all of that trouble for a Virtual Boy game, you can play another game in the SD Gundam series called SD Gundam GX Super for the Super Famicom. Just like the Virtual Boy version though, this is also in Japanese, so you might need to source an English patch or no Japanese. Virtual Fishing is a Japanese exclusive fishing game for the Virtual Boy. Your goal is to fish for a particular species of fish at each of the spots and become the best angler on the lake. Finding another game like it isn't too hard. Many fishing games of the era shared many similarities in gameplay, so finding something similar to play isn't too difficult. My choice would be Black Bass Lore Fishing on the Game Boy Color. The Virtual Boy had two bowling games, Nestor's Funky Bowling and Virtual Bowling. Both are similar enough to each other, but they do have some key differences. Nestor's Funky Bowling is more of a light-hearted and silly virtual bowling game, whereas Virtual Bowling is more of a standard bowling game. Other than the skin of these games, they function very much like every other bowling game of the time. If you're looking for a similar bowling game with similar gameplay, I would say Super Bowling on the SNES is your best bet. It is somewhat goofy, but also performs in the same way both games on the Virtual Boy do. Jack Bros is an uncommon and fun dungeon crawler-like game for the Virtual Boy. It was Shin Megami Tensei's introduction in the US, and yet so few folks got to experience it. Luckily it's a game you can emulate and play without difficulty, but if you want to know what this game comes closest to, I would say it reminds me a lot of Gauntlet on the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, or even the arcade version. Much like in Jack Bros, in Gauntlet, you roam around various floors defeating enemies, collecting items, and finding keys to move on to the next level. Gauntlet lacks the cute visuals Jack Bros has, but still gives you a fun gaming experience. Waterworld was probably the hardest game to find something equivalent to it. It honestly wasn't until a member of the Virtual Boy told me about Earhart on the Apple II that I was able to finally find something that fit the bill. Much like Waterworld, you traverse across a body of water, defeating enemies from your raft, and collect items to further your progress. There are many shooter games out there, but none that use the same field of view and even the same aquatic concept as these two. You can safely emulate Waterworld with no trouble, and in this case, you might actually find it easier than trying to play Air Heart. So, the choice is yours. And that, my friends, is how you can experience the Virtual Boy games without a Virtual Boy. Let me know if you have any ideas on other games that might be comparable to the Virtual Boy library and share them in the comments. Um, with that said, hope you enjoyed. Until next time, guys, take care.